What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Spayburn 15. Stick around. All right, so we're looking at the Spayburn 15 today. And this is a whiskey that was pretty obscure up until quite recently. Uh, even the brand on the whole has not been a popular brand for a very long ever, uh, at least in my memory. But that does seem to be changing thanks to this man right here. Now, of course, I'm sure you all know this guy. He's a deeply respected member of the community. Uh, his name is Roger. He's a cocktail reviewer. He hails from the Scottish Highlands, uh, more specifically the downtown area. Uh, he's famous not only for his YouTube channel, but for his deep affection for houseflies and his particularly raunchy OnlyFans content. Obviously, I'm kidding. Roy, please don't kick me out of the Oswas. Uh, no, we all know Roy. We all love Roy. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he runs a channel called Aquavite. Wonderful uh, community-based stuff. Go check out his content. Uh, but I'd wager most of you are already familiar with him, and I'd also wager that he's the reason a good chunk of you clicked on this video. And that's because Roy is known to have a keen eye for value, and this is one of the whiskeys that he's been evangelizing pretty enthusiastically on his channel lately. And as a result, we are seeing a surge of interest in this bottle and possibly the brand overall. Like we might finally be seeing Spayburn start to emerge from obscurity a little bit. Time will tell. Anyway, this one was released in 2017 and apparently the earlier batches were both bourbon and sherry driven. And then the profile kind of shifted over time to be something that was much more sherry forward. Uh, but according to Roy, regardless of what iteration of Spayburn 15 you have, the quality is there regardless, so it would just come down to your personal preference. This is the first bottle I've ever owned of this stuff. Mine was bottled in 2019, so already three years ago. Uh, so a slightly earlier bottling, and I can say with some certainty that it's already leaning pretty hard in a sherry direction. Um, it's also worth noting that this is not like a sherry finished whiskey. The bourbon casks and the sherry casks were matured separately and then married together. And yeah, this one has been picking up a lot of steam lately. Roy does carry quite a bit of influence within the community. I'm not immune to it. I picked this bottle up based on his recommendation. He's been talking about this one for a good while now, so I would imagine there is something to it. Let's find out. Let's jump into our review. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Actually, you know what? Before we move on, I do want to give a quick plug to the Oswas or the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards. Voting is now live and I would encourage you all to go and vote and make your opinions known. This is our chance to come together as a community and celebrate some of the best whiskeys we've enjoyed over the past year and your vote can and will have an effect on the outcome. So yeah, certainly go vote. Uh, what I'll do, I'll link the link down below. Link the link? Link the link. Like it is a verb and it is a noun. Listen, the grammar is fine. So we have naturally presented stuff here. This one comes in at 46% ABV. It is non-chill filtered and our color is natural. Excellent. So we have our beautiful natural color there. As for the bottle, I think it's fine, but it doesn't do too much for me. Uh, I think they could probably update the look a little bit. Uh, for me, this is a relatively low key whiskey. It's not like too flashy. So that should probably be reflected in the bottle if they were gonna update it. Don't go too flashy, don't go too bold. Give us an understated, elegant look that's just a little bit more modern. And yes, I did just assume that an entire brand would update their entire product line based off of a few criticisms I put out in a YouTube video. I am very self-important. But yeah, as it is, it's just a little bit bland. I'll give it two and a half out of five for presentation. I do would like the update. I do would like. I do would like they would update it. I would do like that very much. Um, it does say non-chill filtered and natural color, so that's good. All right, so first off, I want to say that this is a beautiful color. And yes, lighter colored whiskeys are beautiful too. It is absolutely a misconception that darker whiskeys are in any way better, but this is a darker whiskey and it looks fantastic. Uh, I did not add water to this. Let's try the nose. So this is very sherry forward. Uh, beautiful, lush, rich sherry. It's not too sweet, but it is sweet. And it's not too modern, but it is modern. Like there's nothing like uh, grungy or challenging here. 
We've got straightforward quality sherry here, which isn't quite as common as you'd think these days. Uh, but we have classic sherry notes in here. We have like dates, figs, raisins, uh, red fruits, cinnamon, Christmas cake, apple strudel, canned peaches, caramel, and butterscotch. It's good. Now the palate. Um, texture, not really a standout, but our flavors, immediately very robust. Um, sherry, 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 uh, cracked pepper, red fruits. We've got cinnamon, nutmeg, Christmas cake. Uh, what's interesting here is that there's this savory, meaty element in the background, which just nice little extra twist there. But for the most part, this is really just a classic sherry forward profile, sherry forward flavors, but it's well done. Now the finish. All right, uh, nice pepperiness here. Cracked pepper, white pepper, maybe even a little bit of like a, a chili pepper. Uh, those Spanish casks definitely brought some spices with them. Uh, we have a natural, not too sweet vanilla like vanilla pods. That initial sweetness from the arrival does start to fade, but that savory meatiness note does tend to linger, as does the red fruits and the cinnamon and some black licorice. Uh, it's a medium finish. All right, so if you're approaching this whiskey and you're just looking at the tasting notes, this is gonna come across as a very sort of typical, big, sherry-forward whiskey. And yeah, I mean, that. That is the gist of the profile, but it's really good. And the reason for that comes down to execution. I think the fact that our casks here were married as opposed to slapping a sherried finish on a bourbon matured whiskey made a pretty big difference here. Uh, it is still primarily a sherry forward whiskey. It's a sherry, not bomb, but yeah, there we go, sherry forward. Uh, but the bourbon still makes its presence felt. We still get the caramels, we still get the honeys, we still get the vanillas, the, the oak, all that. That's all in here and the interplay between the sherry and the bourbon casks goes a lot deeper than it would had it just been a finish, if that makes sense. Thing is, this one might not blow you away right away though. I think the vast majority of you will find it perfectly pleasant, but initially it might come across as, granted, a good quality one, but just sort of like a typical sherry forward space cider, which of course is a fantastic style of whiskey in my opinion, but you might be thinking, all right, I've had these flavors before. And yeah, it's certainly not reinventing the wheel, but I would encourage you to stop and think like, how often do we have all of these elements coming together in one whiskey where we have something that's that's quality, that's that's well-aged, that's naturally presented, that's very affordable. Uh, we will talk about price in a moment, but yeah, this is an affordable whiskey. Like, how often do all of those elements come together at the same time? Not often. And you know, this is the kind of thing that I might have taken for granted 10 years back. Uh, and by might have, I mean, did, uh, but nowadays, if you stop and pause and think, okay, what else do I have that's comparable to this on the market right now? There isn't much. Uh, yes, we still do have options. We still do have stuff like this or this. And fair play, there are more options than that. We also have stuff like this, which I'm sure you like more than I do. We have stuff like this, which is not what it used to be, regardless of whether or not it's chill filtered. But yeah, we do have other options. The thing is, they're often more expensive. And I like this one not just because it is one of the more affordable choices, I also think it's one of the better ones. It's basically everything you'd want in a well-aged, lush, sherry-forward profile. There's nothing too challenging here. It is a very accessible whiskey. Uh, it's not too sweet. Our flavors aren't too superficial. Uh, listen, it's not a fireworks whiskey. It's not going to blow you away. It just it checks all the boxes for quality. There's no getting around it. I think the only real requirement for you to enjoy this one is that you be a sherry fan. And if you are, I would imagine you'll get along just fine with this stuff. Uh, and you know, actually, I think it's kind of odd that we're only noticing this stuff now. It took Roy shouting this from the rooftops in order for us to take notice. Listen, it's been around for years, guys. Like my bottle's from 2019, so it's not like a recent bottling. This has been in front of my nose for years and I'm as much to blame as anyone else. I've been ignoring this brand forever. It's the first bottle I've ever bought from them. I have tried the 10 before. Didn't love it back in the day. Might need to revisit it. But yeah, I just, 
I would always walk past these guys in favor of something maybe a little bit more trendy or interesting or talked about, you know, whatever's in vogue, that's that's what I'm seeking out. And I don't know, there's there's probably a lesson in there for us or something. Anyway, I love it. I'm going to give this one an 89. I think it's one of your better options if you're looking for an aged sherried whiskey. Uh, I'd say it's on par with even this one here, the Glen Farkless 15, which is another fantastic dram. Also affordable, also delicious. I also scored this one 89, so it's in good company. So if you like stuff like Ball Blair 15 from Spayburn's sister distillery, if you like stuff like Glendronic 15, Glen Alki 15, or uh, the Glen Farkless I just showed you, any of those whiskeys, if you're a fan of that style, you will get along with this whiskey. I can't imagine anyone being offended or put off by this stuff. It's very accessible. It's very delicious. I'm a huge fan. Now let's talk about value. So as you might have guessed, I do have good things to say about this when it comes to value. I think this is one of the better bang for buck 15 year olds on the market, sherried or otherwise. It's a very affordable whiskey. It's a delicious whiskey. Uh, and I would say grab it while you still can before the prices start to go up because I would imagine the ball's rolling already. This is going to start getting more popular and it's funny because when things start getting more popular, the prices mysteriously start to rise. But while it is still affordable, I would say absolutely check this one out. Pick it up. It's worth it. Uh, where I live, it's about on par in terms of price as the Glen Farkless 15 I just showed you. Both are excellent whiskeys, both excellent value. Like this is this is the kind of value you don't see too much of anymore. So yeah, it's it's one to check out. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That is always appreciated. And I do want to hear from you. Have you tried Spayburn 15? What were your thoughts? Finally, down below in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.